In this short video presentation, I'd like to talk about meaning and sound in writing. All writing systems can be interpreted both phonetically and semantically. They vary to the extent that one of these is foregrounded over the other. Some writing systems seem to be more oriented towards representing meaning, others towards representing sound. However, no writing system encodes sound perfectly, nor does any encode meaning perfectly. Writing systems that foreground meaning are interesting in that they can be more easily read and shared across languages. These symbols can represent the words of any language. Similarly, Chinese-based characters are used in several Asian languages. The symbols could have the same meaning, even though the sound of the word is completely different. At the other end of the scale, we have writing systems that attempt to encode sound very precisely. Hangul, the Korean alphabet, is interesting here because the symbols were actually based on the shape of the mouth. They corresponded to the sound they were to represent. Other, later, but successful writing systems have attempted to make the same connection between script and articulatory organs. So not only are the, these writing systems encoding sound, but they're actually encoding it by paying attention to the articulatory organs. Founded in 1886, the International Phonetic Association devised the International Phonetic Alphabet. This writing system intends to be able to transcribe the sounds of any language and all languages with great precision, following a one-letter, one-sound principle. Most writing, however, remains much closer to the middle. In alphabetic writing, the one-letter, one-sound principle is often violated with silent letters, letter combinations that have a sound that neither letter symbolizes on their own, letters with multiple pronunciations, etc. With writing systems that are more logographic, that is, encoding meaning, some sound encoding also often takes place. Less common Chinese characters often contain a more common Chinese character within them, to give you a clue as to their pronunciation. These are called radicals. So even in the writing system that we would think of first when we thought of logographic systems, sound encoding does take place to some degree. No system of writing faithfully captures the range of human meaning, nor could it. No system of writing will faithfully capture the full range of sounds produced by human beings, nor should it. Comis does not even consider this to be a loss. He says, writing does not refer exclusively to either thought or sound, and it is quite misleading to consider pure semiography as ideals that writing, real writing systems fail to reach. Real writing is a compromise. It is historic and it is pragmatic. Writing that attempted to capture the range of human meaning would be unusably complex with an excess of characters, as would be writing that attempts to transcribe all the possible sounds, and neither is necessary. The compromises that most writing systems in use have found is to record enough information that the reader can decode it, but not so much as to make that decoding laborious, and require the reader to learn some systematic conventions, but not so many as to make the writing system unlearnable. Successful writing systems are possible to learn and relatively efficient. As Colmer says, all writing systems have phonetic and semantic interpretations, and they differ in the importance attached to one or the other. As we look at logographic, syllabic, alphabetic, and consonantal alphabetic systems in, in, in a future video, we'll examine how much more importance each pays to sound or and or to meaning, that is to phonetic and or semantic encoding.